You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We have a special guest in the building. That's Ms. right. Erica Garner, daughter of Eric Garner. What's up, Erica? What's up, y'all? How are you? I'm good. Now, I saw I was reading an article in the Washington Post. It was by, um, hold on, let me get the name right. Oh, Terrell Starr. And he was saying that he was a skeptic of Bernie Sanders until he heard you and a few other black women women speak. Now, what do you have to say about Bernie Sanders and endorsing him? Um, if black people want to change in America, if they believe in themselves and they want to stand, um, they want someone to speak up about their issues, vote for, vote for Bernie. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at his record, he got a long record of standing with black people, um, not only when it's popular, not only as a political pawn, He's been in this work for a long time, marching with Martin Luther King, uh, standing behind Jersey Jackson when it wasn't popular, when Martin Luther King was um, considered by the FBI the biggest threat in America. He was marching with Martin Luther King. And um, he has a lot of, he's addressing a lot of our black issues. Yeah, he's not, he's not just telling us things that we want to hear because it's dream selling season and he's trying to get, to get our votes. He's been out here doing it. Yeah, he's been out do doing it for a long time. And I didn't know much about Bernie, but I believe um, if most people, you know, do the research and look at his record, it will speak for itself. They will be convinced just like uh, Terrell was. How many politicians have come to you trying to get your endorsement? None, and not even Bernie. Um, I reached out with, to him like a month ago, and mm -hmm. we've been in talks with his um, campaign team back and forth, and all I wanted to do was help. What mm -hmm. inspired you to reach out to him? What was it that happened? Um, that he said the the Black Lives Matter in Seattle and when the way he handled him. the situation, mm -hmm. and um, he's not over, he's not uh, he's not lecturing us. He's not taking us to the back room. He's not telling us what we should think. He's he's listening. He's open to listening, and I believe I believe that um, if we stand behind him, even if he's just saying saying things that you're not believing. If you sit down with him, talk with him, he will listen. And it's our job, job as a people to hold him accountable for anything that he says. So what did you find or what did you hear that made you want to reach out to him? Like what in specific? Just that Black Lives Matter in Seattle, that, is that what made you want to reach out to him um, and be a part of his team? And his history. Mm -hmm. Learn about his history. And um, it's not something that he specifically said, mm -hmm. but he's fighting for a better education, free education. Um, he specifically said... Um, from K to 12, it's free education, but um, when you go to get higher education, black people especially, we, we in debt. We more in debt than real estate. And um, I believe um, my daughter, she's six, she doesn't have a chance at college. Not because she's not smart enough, it's just the fact about money, and it shouldn't be that way. What are your thoughts on Hillary Clinton? Um, I believe that Bernie is the best candidate. He's the only one speaking out on black issues. Mm -hmm. And especially with the injustice going going around today. Um, he's not only talking about the injustice as an in illegal aspect. He's talking about our economic struggles. Now you, seem very, you seem very well versed in politics. Were you always just like this way your whole life? Or um, after your father untimely, I'm going to say murder because that's what it was. Yeah, did, yeah, did, yeah. Is that when you got involved? Um, I've always been... You know, I've been a great advocate for uh, Barack Obama in 2008 and in 2012. Um, I always talked about it, but I never really dove into it. I did it as a hobby. But ever since this happened to my father, I've been nonstop working, researching, and speaking out. Concerned about our rights. Yes. Yeah, I saw you say once that you was even thinking about running for Congress. Um, that's, I'm just going to leave that alone. Yeah. <laughs> it's just been widespread, you know. Um, I just want to get on Staten Island and organize the people to vote and organize the North Shore, which is mostly black people, and where my father was killed. And I just want them to organize and for them to fight for their voice. A Are lot you of interested in running for office? Um, I'm interested in just being for the people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's up to the people. I want to be able, if you're not going to speak out, I'm going to be the one to speak out. Now, even with the money, y'all choosing to stay on Staten Island, or um, my family, just for the for the record, my family is not from Staten Island. We from Brooklyn. Gotcha. We was born and raised in Brooklyn. I live in Brooklyn, and I hate Staten Island. 
<laughs> Did you hate it before? <laughs> I always hated it. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, you know, I lived out there when I was uh, for six months when I was about 15, and I don't like the whole structure. It's like it's like down south uh, back in the 50s. It's, it's like segregated. Um, getting up, getting on a, the bus in the morning, like nothing but nothing but white people i went to a uh, school out in Staten Island, mm-hmm. and there's nothing but white people on a on a bus uh made me feel uncomfortable and then you know all the teachers is white so i just felt uncomfortable i was ready to go back to brooklyn so really even with park hill stapleton everybody everybody mm. i know from Staten island is black i guess um, well not everybody but a lot of people but it's different it's a different tone they not they that they don't care like it's not it's not they, they don't care it's, it's to me it's like they blame brainwashed like they 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 oblivious to what's going on, and it's happening to them. How's your mother doing? She's great. She's great. She's just dealing with everything. She still get emotional. Um, we talk. Um, she's still. Um, you met her, right? Yeah, Absolutely. We met her. yeah. So she's still her. <laughs> she's still her. How do you feel about Donald Trump? Donald Trump, he's a joke. Yeah, he's a clown. <laughs> he's a joke. Mm. Um, I um. I've been working for the past for that past uh almost two years now. Um I've been working with protesters and organizers in the street. Um shout out to uh Shut It Down and YC Shut It Down. They do protests every week, protesting, um, keeping the people aware of everything that's going on, you know, whatever that that don't hit the media. They protest every week a different person. Why do you think that Donald Trump is doing so well in the polls for the Republicans? Um, because he's a great personality, I guess. You, like, does uh, that surprise you that people can back some of the things that he says and actually are supporting him? Um, I don't, I don't, I haven't even watched any of the things that he's been saying except for what pops up on the, on the TV. Mm-hmm. But I really don't pay much attention to him. But he is making a lot of noise. To, right, because I was watching the debate people. yesterday and. He wasn't even there, but they talk about him yeah, that's what they talk so about. much. It's like mm. he's just a celebrity, you know, and people are drawn to celebrity for some reason, some no matter reason. what they say. How do the police treat you now? Do you have you? Oh, um, any, any, recently any I just stood with Ramsey Order in the courtroom in Staten Island for one of his cases because he's been the only one indicted in my father's case, and the only thing he's done was speak up and speak the truth. And they've been constantly harass, harassing him since then, and I decided to stand with him and. They button rushed me out the courtroom because I had my phone in my hand saying that I was uh, recording about 15 officers, you know, surrounding me, yelling at me. I ended up getting into an altercation. I was scared out my ass, but I wasn't trying to let that man intimidate me. And, you know, just just like y'all killed my father and uh-huh. y'all see me. And then now y'all want to, you know, harass me. And I told them to that, like, you know, what is your reason for bothering me for what? Um, what is your reason for bothering me? For what? And y'all got all these officers here for, just for Eric Gardner's daughter. I felt that, I felt I felt really like I was targeted as soon as I walked in the court, courtroom. Harassed um, and intimidated. Yeah, they don't want they don't want people standing together. You would think they would have some type of sympathy. You know what I'm saying? No, none at all. Um, I do. They they, they know my presence out in Staten Island because I did protests every Tuesday and Thursday for about a year. So they know they know my face. They know what I do, and you know, they they used to follow me in unmarked cars with my protest. It's just uh, set up barricades where I was supposed to protest. I even started a anti uh, uh, rebuttal uh, protest on one of my um, protest days, and used the same route and you know the same the same things that I was doing. They was trying to do. Is social so, justice something that you want to do? Like, is that, is that what you want to do from now my on? Life, my life career, I dedicated myself to this. Not only fighting for justice for my father, but fighting for everyone. Fighting for, you know, the next generation. I want to treat, I want to teach the next generation of organizers and protesters to know that, you know, you don't only have to be walking in the streets to get your voice heard. Like, it's many other outlets. How can people reach out to you to be part of the movement if they want to um, get started also or come and show their support for you? I just started my um, my new website, officialericagarner.com. Then it's always Twitter, Official Erica Garner, and then Facebook. Um, and then I got a Huffington Post blog mm-hmm. where, you know, writing has become one thing that I've been doing. And I also want to mention, you know, um, 
mental health. You know, you see, you hear the the, the Blasio making mental health an important issue, but he have nothing put in place for people like me, Tamir Rice, uh, Tamir Rice, uh, little sister, like victims that have to deal with mental health. Like, mm-hmm. I have to literally beg do- beg doctors to 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 help me talk to someone professionally, mm. and it's three hundred dollars an hour, mm-hmm. and who got who got money for that? You know, I'm not rich, you know, and I'm pretty sure other families is not rich and they can't afford that. And, you know, I'm, you know, thank God for this one person that's offering for free mm-hmm. to talk with me because mental health, you know, that does affect you. And, you know, that this is trauma. This is trauma. Like, I haven't dealt with my father's death. It's been, like, I haven't been mourning. So I'm trying to, like... I've been dealing with my father's death as a case study, like constantly speaking out, and this is all I have. Well, we appreciate you joining us. Official Eric, Erica Garner. Official, Official Erica Garner. Garner. Com. And good luck with everything. Thank yeah, you. I mean, we got to keep your father's name out there even when the cameras go away. Like, I, that's why I think things like this are important. Because a lot of times it's out of sight, out of mind, but, you know, the injustice no. happens and it's still going to continue yeah. to happen if we don't. I'm keep gonna make sure it. I keep it. I keep my father's name out there, and also whoever else that they does does it so because it has to stop, and they need to be held accountable. All right. Well, it's Erica Garner. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, 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 hey. The Breakfast Club every weekday morning. Tune in.